Hey, good morning, everyone. This is Carolina Weather Authority meteorologist Joshua Nagelberg, and a lot going on in the tropics to talk about here. We've been, of course, expecting this to get a, to be a very busy time. Uh, maybe our first major hurricane, maybe not. We think that potential is still there, of course. Uh, but what we're starting to see becoming more of a certainty is something very rare. That's two potential named storms affecting the Gulf Coast in a 24-hour period, maybe two hurricanes hitting. Uh, of course, that's probably the high-end extreme at this point, but something that I'm definitely watching. So we're going to get right into that. But if you could, please, if you haven't already, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We've got our homepage, Facebook, and Twitter all linked here, carolinawxauthority.com. An article issued yesterday which uh, went into a lot more detail about what's going on here with the tropics. And yes, this is a rare event. It may even be unprecedented. Unprecedented. Let me slow that down for you guys. All right, I need some coffee. Um, but you know, nonetheless, something everybody in the Gulf needs to keep a close eye on Florida as well, which I guess is the Gulf, um, especially the Gulf side of Florida. So yeah, lots to talk about for y'all. Uh, what we've got are two tropical depressions that are going to be impacting land in the next six days. 14 is near Honduras and 13 will be approaching the northern Leeward Islands later today. And if that weren't enough, uh, our next potential named storm is out here in the eastern Atlantic. It emerged off the African coast. A low chance that it could develop in the next two days, but maybe a medium chance in five. The faster it develops, the less of a thing I think, less of a concern I think it is to the U.S. Um, but the slower it takes, and things have taken a while to get going in here because of the dry air from the Saharan layer, um, then that's something obviously here in the southeastern U.S. we need to keep a closer eye on, but way off in the future at this point. All right, so we'll start here with 13, then we'll get to 14. Um, 13 remains kind of disorganized. It's a depression, and we have tropical storm watches in effect for the northern Leeward Islands, the Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, and now as well the southeastern Bahamas and Turks and Caicos. Um, nothing yet up for um, the northeast coast of the Dominican Republic or the north coast of Haiti, but that could be coming. Uh, but you'll see the track um, is showing um, potentially some interaction with these big islands, which would not be healthy for the storm, uh, but also potentially a path that goes mostly over warmer waters and uh, getting close to the Florida Keys here on Monday afternoon and then into the eastern Gulf Tuesday with landfall potentially late Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, um, somewhere on the central Gulf Coast. Maybe it's the Panhandle or maybe it's Louisiana. This area here is one of the ones that we targeted um, during our seasonal forecast for being a hot spot for landfalling hurricanes, or at least landfalling systems. So this does not surprise us one bit. Um, the two things I want you guys to be aware of. Number one, um, the speed of the system is slowing down on the models. It was showing landfall coming on Sunday morning or afternoon, and now has slowed it down, giving us some more time to watch it now for Monday. Uh, landfall potentially over the Florida Keys or southeast Florida, including Miami. Uh, so a little bit slower track. Uh, number two, um, it's shifted farther to the west as the high pressure region up in here has uh, strengthened and models are starting to see that and are now pushing the system a little farther west. So in the Carolinas, that, that is definitely what we want to hear. Um, for those of you, though, Louisiana and Mississippi, you don't like that western shift and I don't blame you. Uh, but again, this forecast is subject to change probably 55 million times between now and potential landfall here in the middle of the week. And I'm going to get into um, kind of the, the very high ceiling of what this could be and also the very low what it may not end up being. Uh, so quite a bit there. All right. Um, so a, a view, and I should show that a little bit later, but a view of the um, satellite imagery. This is the water vapor. It shows moisture in the mid and upper levels. doesn't show what's going on near the surface. Um, shows you here's 14 and the center is right here just off Honduras but moving northwest. It shows 13 which is starting to grow its thunderstorm activity after a lull yesterday and um, but a lot of disorganization. I'll get into that in a little bit and then our next disturbance which could be AL99 and invest here in a little bit. We'll see um, which uh, the center's down in here actually and will be passing near the Cabo Verdes and then into the western Atlantic. Um, what we have, though, in the big picture is a ginormous area of high pressure right here and um, a lot of dry air from the Saharan layer affecting uh, the eastern Atlantic. That has not really changed despite uh, what's a very favorable Madden-Julian oscillation phase. It's the MJO, which uh, tends to lead to a lot of rising air across the Atlantic basin. That is coming in, um, but nonetheless, we still have dry air to deal with and nothing supremely unusual at this point. Um, you can see some dry air in the way um, for four, uh, 13 here, and that's keeping it from strengthening quickly. 
Um, this upper low is starting to pull away. It was causing some southerly wind shear yesterday. It looks like that might try to relax a little bit today. So that's why we think it could be a tropical storm. And then in the Gulf states, um, this is uh, producing a lot of heavy rain over Florida, Georgia, into the Western Carolinas. There's a pretty well-defined upper level trough, actually even an upper low here near um, Jackson and Macomb, Mississippi. And that's drawing all this tropical moisture out of the Pacific, out of the uh, Gulf of Mexico, northeastward. And uh, will be something that will be interacting with this system and eventually this system as well. So we have to watch and see how this is going to evolve because it's going to have a big play on what's going to happen here over the weekend into next week. Um, on the western side, a ton of dry air coming down through Texas and into the western Gulf. And dry air, of course, not good for tropical systems. But it also um, will have less of an effect of a well-developed hurricane than it would a tropical depression. Dry air will kill a depression. It'll murder it. But a strong hurricane, it will weaken slowly. So how strong this system gets and how strong this system get are going to be um, going to come into major play as to how this trough is going to impact it. So um, let's take a look here at um, Hurricane Hunter flying through 13 and seeing very high pressure and seeing one, two, maybe three surface circulations or and a mid-level circulation in here, um, which is signs of a not so healthy depression. Uh, but it's also seeing tropical storm force winds up here. Um, they're not going to classify it a tropical storm based on what we're seeing here because there really isn't a whole lot of wind around our circulation centers, which is good news, by the way, for the northern Leeward Islands. Uh, so right now the fish are getting the wind and these folks are not. Um, however, if this thing consolidates, the wind is there for it to become a tropical storm. It's just not happening right now. And I'm going to show you that satellite image, and you can see, and this is from TropicalTibbets.com, getting a lot of uh, play here today, as you can imagine. Um, but um, thunderstorm activity has ramped up. <clears throat> Let me see if I can stop this for you guys. Um, but tropical storm, I guess not. <laughs> I tried. Good grief, get it some coffee. Um, <clears throat> anyway, tropical storm um, activity has ramped up quite a bit in, this, in the um, mid-level center here, but the low-level center down here is pretty much void of that convection. So that's not a good sign for tropical development. Um, but we saw that with Isaias, and that system got pretty big. This one's not quite doing that yet, but it could. Um, but some light westerlies here coming through the Northeast Caribbean are kind of shearing things away from the center. So we've got a little while for this thing to really ramp up, which is a good sign, of course. Uh, the models do take, um, for the most part, take it very close to the Virgin Islands, just north of Puerto Rico, and just north of the Big Islands. There's avoidance and a track somewhere into the central Gulf Coast states. Yesterday they were showing it over western Florida or potentially hitting Miami. Now they've shifted west. The UK Med is the lone outlier, keeps it weak and south, and it will probably die a slow death over here, to be honest with you. Um, but the, goal, the thing that I'm trying to show you guys is that when it gets up into here, if it's avoided a lot of land, it does have a good shot of intensifying, maybe even to hurricane strength near the Florida Keys. And it could strengthen over the Florida Keys. But if it comes farther north towards Miami, that's that's um, going to come to a halt. If it comes farther west, it's got a much better shot in the southeastern Gulf of strengthening. And so I think you guys definitely need to be aware of what could happen here in the north central Gulf Coast states. Um, we can see storms strengthening quickly in here like we saw with Michael a couple years ago. Is it going to be a Cat 5? I mean, gosh, that, that would take a pair to just say that would happen. So we're not saying that, but maybe a 3 or 4 high end. We'll have to take a look and see. Uh, but 120 hours from now puts this thing at um, early Wednesday morning. So late Tuesday night, Wednesday morning for potential impact. That's what we're looking at. Uh, GFS ensembles, or the global ensemble forecast system, is a little bit in better agreement, but it does keep the system fairly weak uh, with a few models starting to show it get to hurricane strength near the Keys, but a few um, do strengthen it right up to landfall potentially in Louisiana or Mississippi, which of course we don't hope happens but a track farther east would be weaker. So in between is what the Hurricane Center is going with Category 1 strength at, at this point. And you can see um, a lot of disagreement in the models. Some don't develop it at all. Others keep it on the low end, Tropical Storm, and then a few are going to, once it gets to the Florida Keys, strengthen it quite a bit in the eastern Gulf. All that's on the table, we think. And you can see with the h -worf, it, um, and it may be strengthening this thing much faster than it will happen, but... It does show development into a tropical storm over the weekend, and then potentially on Monday morning, a hurricane. This is a Category 1 strength, 73 knots, uh, approaching the Florida Keys, and then continued strengthening 
over the eastern and then northern Gulf of Mexico. And this is about the very high end I could see it getting. 125, 130 mile per hour, category three storm, maybe category four storm, uh, you know, maybe keying in on Alabama, Florida, perhaps a little farther west. Um, I would love to say that we know that's gonna happen for sure. And of course, I don't wish that on anybody, but this is kind of the extreme, if that makes sense to you guys. This is kind of the ceiling. All right, on to 14 here. And um, again, we've got tropical tidbits up for you guys. Um, taking a look at the center, it's got a large area of outflow, which is healthy, but the core of the storm, not quite so healthy. That could be because it's interacting with land right now. Honduras is right here, getting a lot of rain on the northeast coast, but we do see thunderstorms blowing up in here. Uh, the core, though, is, is not very well organized, but this system may beat the other one to getting that Laura name. Uh, we thought maybe this one would take longer, it'd be Marco, and that, that one would be Laura, but now we think this could be Laura and that one Marco. And if I'm the Hurricane Center and they're both Tropical Storm at the same time, which could be by tonight or later this afternoon, then uh, <laughs> it's uh, let's, let's throw the darts at the board and see what happens, right? Uh, but anyway, uh, a great favorable spot for it to develop once it gets up into here. This wind shear is going to relax and lift northward with the trough. Um, so our forecast shows it, um, maybe a high-end tropical storm, maybe even potentially a hurricane up in here. So we have a hurricane watch for the Yucatan. Um, some, some possibility it could avoid that land and go right on this track toward Louisiana, maybe affecting Mississippi. Other possibilities have it, you know, going farther to the west and staying maybe a little bit weaker. Middle of the road is what the Hurricane Center is saying, and that's a hurricane hitting um, close to Beaumont, Port Arthur here, um, Tuesday night, early Wednesday morning. So let me back it up and show you this. 2 a.m. Wednesday, potential hurricane near Pensacola for 13. And uh, 2 a.m., a little bit earlier than 2 a.m. Wednesday, hurricane near Port Arthur. So we could have an unprecedented two hurricanes hitting at once. Model guidance agrees pretty well. This stays just off the coast and moves northwestward, makes that right turn, comes into the central gulf. How far west it goes, um, some models showing it weak over here, but most of the tropical models now aiming towards Louisiana. Um, and intensity-wise, tropical storm for the most part. Again, a lot will depend on what happens with 13, uh, but some, some potential for hurricane status as well. We'll keep that and the h wharf again, our high-end extreme, yeah, I'm showing it to you, um, hopefully not right, um, but does show this as a Category 1, maybe Category 2 hurricane coming close to Lake Charles and Cameron. This is also faster, by the way. Um, it's avoiding this circulation because it's faster, but um, a lot of the other models are showing it being slower, such as the Canadian. And uh, because it's slower and this is faster, it just doesn't really develop. The icon's kind of middle of the road, and one I, I want to take a look at. Kind of shows a one two in here um of course this one farther west than the other um and the gfs um parallel shows this one being the stronger storm what will not happen is that these two are not going to be major hurricanes swirling around each other like a fujiwara um i just don't think that happens uh, and the reason why is this wind shear with this uh, trough up here that um is going to send a lot of dry air into the western side of at least this storm um, which um, this this one coming through here, you know, if it develops will be the bigger storm But if it doesn't this will be the bigger storm It'll get wind sheared and that's what we're kind of rooting for for in the Gulf states All right, uh, one last thing I'm going to show you. Okay, here's our water potential our heat potential in the tropics And it's pretty darn high in the Northwest Caribbean as well as over here By the way, don't un underestimate the heat potential in the eastern Gulf. That is often a hot spot uh, but rainfall forecasts are just drenching the southeast through next week. Georgia, Florida could be soaking wet. Louisiana as well. This is the GFS. Eventually, this heavy rain comes up into the western Carolinas as well. So we have flood watches out. And a lot of that's what's going on right now, but potentially what could happen uh, later next week. So we could have two wet Fridays. And the European model showing a lot of that heavy rain going farther southwest of Louisiana into Texas, as well as across Florida, Panhandle, and Alabama, and shoving everything westward here and up into the Southern Appalachians. All right, folks, thanks for joining me and please be safe. Have a great Friday and a great weekend. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, make it a good one. God bless.